Okay. This is Steve Pizzatello. I'm with CAST. Um, I work in the product marketing and management uh, within CAST. And I wanted to uh, thank you for joining us today. So today is an interesting format for us. We have three speakers uh, starting, uh, two from Capgemini, and then myself will wrap it up. And the objective of today is to provide kind of an industry top-down perspective on uh, portfolio landscape or application landscapes, um, give you some insight into this uh, recent study that Capgemini has published and some of the um, insights into their practice. And then go down the level below that and get into more of a practitioner perspective um, and, and to give you some understanding of some of the best practices and frameworks that they use. And then finally, I'll talk a little bit about uh, some technology enablement um, that, that CAP is using, um, CAPGemini is using with us. Um, so I want to quickly introduce the, the two other speakers that we'll be presenting, and then we'll, then we'll get started. Uh, our first speaker of the day will be uh, Ron Toledo. He's the Senior Vice President and CTO of Applications uh, for Continental Europe for CAPGemini. He's a um, well-published author and columnist. He's got a um, blog on CTO blog and slow movement. He also uh, writes for Software Release Magazine, .NET Magazine, as well as a couple of books, including the Object Oriented Modeling and C++. Uh, he's also a frequent speaker on topics such as innovative technologies, architecture, and IT strategy. After Ron, uh, we will hear from Kishore Matra, who is a senior manager at CAS, excuse me, at Capgemini. He manages the CAS Center of Excellence um, and gives us some insights into the operations there. He's been with Capgemini for more than 10 years now, and prior to that, he was the software engineer at IIS Infotech. Um, Ron, I'm going to start with you, hand you over the baton, and I'll let you tell us a little bit about the art of application landscaping. Thank you very much, uh, Pete, and uh, welcome to uh, to all attendees. It's a, a true privilege to uh, to uh, speak to you today a little bit about uh, the art of application landscaping. Now, application landscapes is uh, is almost a metaphor, but actually it's a real thing as well, right? If you look at uh, at IT nowadays, um, our applications truly look like a landscape, and uh, as as we all know, landscapes can take many different forms. Um, I'm, uh, I'm the CTO for, for Capgemini's applications business in Europe, and, and from that role, I'm, I'm very much involved in, um, in understanding um, innovations, uh, articulating our own innovation strategy, but most particularly uh, in reaching out to our clients and also our big technology partners like CAST and, and, and others as well, to, to understand how we can bring innovations and new insights uh, to our clients and then test it. Uh, with our clients and and in speaking with with many of these clients across the world it's not only Europe by the way but in, I find myself uh, across the world uh, talking to our, our major clients we are finding that they are clearly uh, on one hand um, inspired by all of the new opportunities that technology is currently bringing I don't think I need to tell you too much about it but we all understand the power of, of mobile and social and big data and the cloud it's it's all inspiring and we're finding that also the business side of organizations is clearly inspired by what technology can bring. Um, but having said that, with, with all of that inspiration and new uh, impulses uh, to, to do IT, we're finding that the existing applications landscape often, uh, more often is an obstacle to, to um, you know, achieving all the benefits of technologies rather than a platform uh, to, to get there. So, so there's something interesting going on right now. We, we seem to be at an inflection point, if you like, in which we need to pick up um, our applications landscape, consider it as a true landscape with a true life cycle and start to rationalize it, uh, start to bring it yet again in sync with what the real business needs are and, and get a better split uh, in, in where we are spending our money. And, and uh, in, in the next few minutes, I'll guide you a little bit through, through some of the um, experiences that we've had um, uh, talking at a strategic level with our clients and understanding from, from some of the more enlightened CIOs how they manage to, you know, break through the inertia of, uh, of, of existing applications landscape. So let's, let's stay a little bit in the metaphors. If, if you look nowadays at an uh, existing um, IT um, applications portfolio or landscape, if you like, it's much like, um, it's much like an old city. Um, many, many applications are, are old. Uh, I've seen already a few clients in which uh, both father and son 
literally have been uh, working on the same software, which to me at least is a extremely scary thought, uh, but it's actually happening. So, so um, although, and I'm quite sure many of you are software engineers or have been software engineers, I've been a software engineer myself as well. And, and uh, you know, the, the big dream, of course, is always to start in the green field and, and start all over again and not being bothered by anything you have. And you could build the, the greatest applications landscape and it would look like the, you know, the most ideal city. But, of course, in practice, we're finding ourselves in an existing situation with a lot of existing applications, multiple generations of technologies, multiple programming languages, multiple solution platforms, all of them um, often tightly integrated. So, so if you like to stay in the metaphor level, it's much like a very old city, which has its charm, which has its history. It's, it's what a city makes a city. But nevertheless, we're trying to innovate it as well, because we must move forward. And we want to turn the city into something more modern and innovative. So, but, but we cannot burn it down and start all over again, right? Although the software engineer in us might, might tend to... Um, to desire that. So, so what we really need to do is, is build a new city, build these new generations of applications, and at the same time must maintain the character and, you know, the charm and, and all the history and all the accumulated knowledge that, that is contained in that old city as well.